day to you. This is Adam Galactic bringing you another science presentation in a series where we're attempting to get at the nature of light. Now, in the last lecture, which was yesterday on February 7th, we talked about the standard model of particle physics, which is a far cry from astronomy, but it's not a far cry from the quantum paradox. The standard model of particle physics I would characterize as a model that is worth understanding in its structure in order to understand the nature of a propagandistic system. There are at least three of these incredibly overarching models that are used to dominate the minds of anyone seeking to get answers, to get the truth, about the universe for whatever reason, uh, you will, of course, as a scientist, want to consult your predecessors in order to not have to reinvent the wheel. We have hundreds of years of progress behind us. This is the storehouse of knowledge in what we call physics. It's really the whole arena of science. The three models that I single out, although they're not the only models, they're remarkable models. Uh, one of them is the standard model of particle physics, which we covered yesterday. I'm going to briefly summarize what we learned from our analysis of the structure and what it says. What is the model? Define it. It's extraordinarily difficult to get that information. And there's a reason for that, which is part of the overall syndrome of model making, which is a very large scale, high scaled industry is the making of models. You might ask, you know, who comes up with these models? That is also extremely difficult to say. They tend to evolve. They tend to lead lives of their own, kind of like a virus. And a model, you could say it's neither good nor bad in itself. It's just one way of encapsulating knowledge, one angle, one method of construction of the facts and relationships so as to make sense out of it. That is the whole reasoning behind having a model. It's a shortcut uh, to summarize understanding. It may all also be a shortcut of understanding, which if the model is wrong, it's catastrophic. If a model is wrong, uh, you are basically deceiving yourself. For instance, if you wish to understand celestial mechanics, which is what the ancients tried to figure out, the explanation, for instance, for the path of the sun through the sky, it took hundreds of years to figure that out because it was quite difficult to see the obvious. We know of it now by the second or third grade, all of us who are trained in the rudiments of what physics actually knows. One of the first things we learn in school is that the sun does not travel through the sky. In no way can that be said, although actually <laughs> there's always a footnote. <laughs> you, you shouldn't say it because it's not the best way to say it. The sun has an apparent motion through the sky, but the correct explanation is that the earth is spinning in the opposite direction. So when it comes to the standard model of particle physics, for instance, as we get into one of the other two, it's very important to recall the lessons that we learned from our analysis of the standard model of particle physics, a highly deceptive term. The whole system is ludicrous when it's analyzed. It defines itself as making everything in the universe into a particle. I, in the many times I attempted to, you know, get some understanding of the model, I was always frustrated at various, as I've gone into it to try to understand something that was being referred to in the model, I of course then consulted the model. 
But it's not easy to get straight answers out of the particle physics cartel. And they are a cartel. It's an industrial phenomenon. And it turns out that having that insight is of incredible importance in interpreting the model. Because the model, when I finally got some straight answers, because I had to force myself to drill down to get the answers that nobody seemed to want to give me. In other words, the model is taken for granted. There is no, ne no necessity to teach the reasoning behind the model because the model has taken the place of understanding because the model is thought to be understanding. Well, if that's true, then you have to be extra meticulous in discovering the proofs behind the model because every scientist has to take the path of all the discoverers that came before him, which can be daunting, but of course that's why we specialize. Now, in the case of the standard model of particle physics, the basic principle on which it's developed is that everything in the universe is a particle, and therefore you get the boson-fermion system. So at the top level, you could say that the standard model is the boson-fermion system. But then when you go to analyze the bosons, they're the three force particle the three force particles in the system, where, and those are the bosons. But the fermions are the mass particles, or sometimes, or usually called the matter particles. Mass and matter are used slightly different. It's quite ambiguous what they mean by mass, that is, the cartel. This is an industrial model. It's not a scientific model, and it states itself to not be a scientific model, right at the outset. So why are we, the public, and really the entire physics world, is completely sold on the standard model of particle physics? Is that, First of all, is that true what I said? Not quite, but the impression gained from some Joe, like you or me, is that it's called a standard model. Well, that's already highly deceptive. First of all, not everything in the universe is a particle. The model chooses that axiomatic basis because it's part of a military industrial endeavor. And so it's to their best interest to approach physics that way. It's not to say that it's not based in physics. Of course it is, but it's based in a highly specific, highly refined system of analysis of what they call particles which are basically unknown in the universe. They're just not a part of reality. So the standard model of particle physics could be renamed to be the virtual system of virtual particle construction. But I don't think that would gain as much support as just saying standard model. Do you? How do you feel? Leave a comment if you want. But that is disillusioning, I would have to say to find out that the standard model of particle physics is a system of deception, and that is the only way to characterize the system. It has no validity, almost no validity. But when we track down where do they put the photon, the most important of all the particles, in, I'll just say, a kind of a hybrid approach, don't forget that the wave-particle duality is at the heart of the quantum paradox. And to say that the photon is a particle is an extremely divisive subject in everybody's mind who is honest. When you go to analyze light, you're instantly confronted with a photon, which is accepted. But now we actually learn something from the standard model, somewhat indirectly, is that if you start with a false premise and work it out into a system, you can come up with something devilishly nightmarish, which is another accurate appraisal of the standard model of particle physics. It's a labyrinth of nightmarish convolutions and mathematics. 
And what's really important that you and I can take home, just put it into our carry-all and haul it off is what we got out of the standard model of particle physics. We learn not to make those mistakes. We learn not to make the mistake of building on a false premise. Now today, I've been putting this off because, again, this another model, the cosmological model. You've heard of the cold, dark, lambda. <laughs> it's called the lambda cold, dark matter model. In approaching this topic, in order to present it to you so you can understand it with me, so all scientists who want the truth can actually know, what is this cosmological model? It follows exactly the same pattern as the standard model. So both of these are standard models, but one is for a reconstruction of physics in terms of an industrial need, which then leads to a complete system of deception. And you just It's a red herring. You're being led on a snipe hunt. You'll never learn anything from the standard model of particle physics, except that's never quite true. Because in order to have a, an adequate system of deception to fool people, this is to fool PhDs as well. It's not just you and I out in the street who are being fooled by this shit. It's the, it's the physicists themselves are completely taken in. Not completely. I'll tell you, there are always physicists who are working on the truth. They actually go around these models in order to get the correct information. That is to put the known facts into a good system for understanding. Well, you can also put it into any number of models which will not be as good. But each of them, each of the models that, which are proposed either for a cosmology or for a system of particles to actually read the fine physics from the ground up, well, you can do whatever you want and then sell it. Well, if you have the United States government behind you and multi, multi-billion dollar devices and you control the media, you can push over any model you want and even get the schools to accept it so that it becomes part of physics itself and that destroys physics. What it doesn't destroy is the military industrial aim, which is not to get any form of truth unless it results in a weapon. That's the only form of truth that the standard model people are after. And I don't indict the humans, although somebody will. Some being greater than I will sort this all out someday. we we got to hope and pray. Because the standard model of particle physics is a complete organized series of lies in order to promote non-understanding. So nobody will go on the right track. <clears throat> now, when it comes to understanding the universe... Any conception or even a mo- uh, if you wish to build out a model, that has been done, of course. That's what we're going to talk about today, is the standard model of cosmology, which is only a century old. And even its origin is highly convolute, and it's extremely difficult to get straight answers out of the cosmological model cartel. For the same reason, it, it's extremely it's like pulling teeth. It's like pulling out someone's fingernails, like in the movie Syria with George Clooney, where he almost broke his neck in that scene where they're pulling out his fingernails. (laughs) Well, this is what it's like to get straight answers out of a a model uh, and the cartel that supports the model. What what the take-home from that, in one sense, is these modelers do not themselves understand their model. What it is, is a, a blueprint of approach to try to get something specific out of the universe. In other words, humans are making demands on the universe. That's not the way of a real scientist. A real scientist is more like someone in, in a Zen state who's listening, who's trying to understand what the universe says. Well, the uh, Hadron Collider people are not doing anything like that. They're not seated 
reverently at the throne of the universe, getting facts and using their mathematics to put things together. No, they walk in, having been brainwashed by the military-industrial complexes, here's your blueprint, get us the weapon, and they are well paid, don't pity them. But there is a moral repercussion. Now, when it comes to telling children, the next generation of children, who will look to you and will look to me, figuratively speaking, each one of us has this responsibility to pass on the beautiful and life-enhancing truth of the universe. That is not being done. It's not being done anywhere. Quite the contrary. It, this is a form of suppression. So I know this sounds strange, but it's important because otherwise, if you don't know why the cosmological model is as bad and ridiculous as it is, it's impossible to understand what they're even saying. So what I'm going to do today is take the same approach, which was the very first time the standard model of particle physics was ever adequately explained. I pride myself on not just being adequate, but being the best. Only I will give you the actual truth at Cutting Edge Physics. Sabine Hassenfelder will not do that. She goes along with the system. And in fact, in one of her recent lectures, I really admire Sabina, so don't think I'm putting her down, but I am putting her in her place. Because this is a job for the big boys. You can't just have anybody running around who's slightly better than the other presenters and phys physicists, people in the industry, as Sabina is, and all they're doing is promoting the system by trying to poke holes in it. So one of her most recent videos is on the pion. It's a little deeper than that because the this is the standard model of particle physics, of course, but she talks about the flaws in the system. These are completely unnecessary to they're unworthy of study because what these flaws in the system are are internal glitches in an invalid model. Now that we know that, and I am responsible for bringing that very important point out, and I should be at Madison Square Gardens broadcasting this to the entire nation and world, I think you understand why that's never going to happen. It doesn't make any difference how good my science is in correcting the gross errors that are taught everywhere. I cannot be heard because I'm, I'm not serving the industry. Sabina is. And therefore, <clears throat> no matter, I, I do watch her and I do, because I get leads from her, she's a very good investigator. And she has a good enough handle. She does discuss these flaws in the systems, both of cosmology and particle physics. She's a thorn in the side to these assholes, and they are assholes. That's very important to realize. Everyone you see on YouTube, uh, uh, there, there are exceptions, though, and you always have to be cautious when talking about humans and talking about science. Sir Roger Penrose is the real deal. You can always rely on Sir Roger Penrose. I can't think of a single other physicist that you could rely on anything they say. They'll start out by misleading you and then just take you down the rabbit hole into their underground labyrinth of false theories and a ridiculous sense of what they call a model. Now, it's easy now to see just how stupid is the standard model of particle physics. So you never need to be fooled again by gluon, pion, hadron, baryon, lepton, boson, fermion, entirely invalid. It, it's not part of science. It's a spin-off of industry to twist the universe around to the godfather's image, to get a weapon, to get power, so that is the strange and sordid and miserable world of particle physics today. It's commandeered by the government. And so we're not going to get any truth out of it. What we're going to get out of it is death very, very soon. 
Now the cosmological model, in my opinion, just from the way I approach the universe, this is orders more serious, more dangerous, more satanic. I use the word satanic. It's a scientific word when it's used correctly. It's not the devil with his red pajamas and horns and, you know, <clears throat> playing rock and roll music and doing crack. That's not what Satan is. Satan is a human phenomenon. It's the group mind phenomenon when men get together and make models, such as democracy or communism or fascism or Zionism or any religion. These are human ideas, but they're not any single human's idea. It's a consensual idea. That is the basis of the conception of Satan, an independent level of mentality, which goes to perhaps that makes an entity. Well, perhaps people should be talking about that a little bit more. That it sure looks like the human race has developed Satan. This Satan does exist now, although the universe never heard of Satan. Humans figured out a way to manifest Satan. Well, if you're trying to understand the universe, you're trying to understand the original design. And if you don't go along with the conception of design, which none of our physicists do, they deny it. They don't believe the universe has any design. Well, if you don't believe it has design, that means you have to make something up. You have to, you'll, you'll imprint the universe with your human design. That's the cosmological model. The lambda cold dark matter model is a satanic system of deceit. And I'm going to show that to you so that you actually see it. The reason for doing this is not to get involved. It's not to start thumping on some ancient text and saying you all are of the devil. That's not the point, although it could be. That's not science. That's not the scientific angle. The scientific angle is, you bastards are lying. You're blocking the children from getting, you're blocking me from getting the truth. You're blocking my listeners. You're blocking humanity. You're standing in the way of progress. Uh, they don't think so, and they have the government to back them. So guess who wins that argument? You know who wins that argument. You can see it all around you. Black hole, black hole, black hole. Big bang, big bang, big bang. <laughs> yeah, and then you get that funnel that opens up. This is the universe that physics has discovered. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it is not. There is no big bang. Although you actually have to leave that open. We're not sure of anything. But one thing you can definitely say is the Big Bang, the way it was formulated, the, the reason for the existence of the theory is essentially based on one and a half facts. But it does not take into account reality. It's a mathematical solution. That is admitted by everybody on all sides. It's a mathematical solution. That's how it originated. But it had to originate in something physical. There has to be at least a superficial reason for the Big Bang. Well, to try to get a straight answer out of these bastards is nearly impossible because they've been programmed not to go there, not to talk about the binary split where the model either could have gone in another direction or it could have gone in the way of the Big Bang direction. They don't like to go back that far and show where the Big Bang model came from. Because if you go back and look there, you'll see for yourself that the Big Bang model is incorrect. And so they don't go there. Because it basically, you could say it's instinctive. It's an instinctive aversion to the truth. That's developed by the group mind. It's called propaganda. And it does not just affect imbeciles, morons, and retards like you and me. That's how we're viewed by them. It affects the PhDs and Nobel Prize laureates. And that shows that the standard model of particle physics and the lambda-cold-dark model of cosmological origin 
they're the same in in source but this goes to the group mind they're not really related subatomic particle physics whatever particles you say there are or whatever you're saying about particles is at one end of a spectrum going way into the building blocks that really doesn't have much to do with the universe which is ginormous so it couldn't have anything to do with cosmology uh, yes they do in the minds of the industrialists whenever you talk about this the standard model you're talking about both standard models because if you see any of the literature if you ever dare to open up some of these papers anywhere there's tens of thousands of these papers that are all the same they always start out by saying something about the particle model that's related to the big bang model in the first few seconds or whatever of the universe in other words they see the universe as being made of these particles and the origin of these particles explains the big bang and the Big Bang is explained by the particles. Well, none of that is true. None of that has anything to do with physics except it would have to in order to convince the PhDs themselves. So to try to probe this, you've got to be a combination of Freud, Jung, um, Noam Chomsky. You've got to have insight of the angels. You have to have a godlike way of just somehow separating yourself yourself from this incredibly incredibly complex system of deception it's a it's a organized well thought out by something not any one human could do anything this diabolical but it just develops there's a sort of an evolution and that's the third model that i want to briefly discuss in order to get the relationships between these kind of models to see the overall pattern of how these how these devilish how these insane these anti-scientific models grow by themselves like a, like the covid virus just came out of nowhere but then it took over right yeah it sure did didn't it a disease so the third model that dominates all of human science right now is of course the this is the one that you can say stuff against the cosmological model and not be crucified by the system you can say stuff against the particle model and not be crucified by the system but you can never not ever say anything against darwinism you can't say anything against biological evolution it's fair bolton and it's not done nobody questions biological evolution the natural selection theory of the descent of species from earlier species this is a well accepted model you have to actually look into that to see what the basis of that model is could it possibly be wrong well you can't say that it can't be wrong now you may say, and I hope you do say, well, th my God, that's not science. We're living in the dark ages. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. This is a dark age. And it doesn't look like it because we have jets and computers. But as far as fulfilling the human potential, which is partly rational, we are blueprinted to get the answers to the universe. That's why we love heaven. That's why we look up. That's why we have telescopes. That's why there's the night sky over our head. And every single religion, including Christianity, and especially Christianity, says, point blank, you want to please God? You want to get to heaven? Then look at heaven. In other words, Jesus commands you to do astronomy and to understand it correctly. If you do anything except get the right answers, it's idolatry. You're, you're creating Satan in the place of God. That's Richard Dawkins. That's Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's Sean Carroll. Brian Green. All of the podcasters. All of the textbooks. You can't get through the university without bowing down or pulling down your pants and exposing yourself to the idol and say, Before Satan, I believe in Darwin. 
I will teach everybody they're from monkeys. If you don't do that, you're out. So that's the situation today, and I'm pretty sure that you know it. So the standard model of human origin is satanic. And the standard model of universal origin, ditto. And the standard model of the building blocks of the universe, ditto. That's everything. That means that you are blocked from finding the truth that you're blueprinted to find. Satan is standing between you and God. And Satan wins every day. And God never wins. Well, Jesus proved that. He came here to save and heal, right? And then what happened to him? He told you, watch what they do to me. And then watch where I go. Do you know where he went? He went to heaven. That's where we're going. Under the blueprinting of the designer to get the right model. And so the right model for the origin of human beings, I don't care how scared you are. I don't care how it makes your panties crawl up into your crack. I don't care if you weep crocodile tears for yourself and maybe in pity of how stupid I am but you've got to grow up sometime. The three models that govern the three origins of everything, the building blocks, the macro space, and humans themselves, you're not allowed to know anything about that that's true. And you never will. That's the rule of the day. That's the rule of the day. So that we already exposed the heresy this is now speaking of true science, logical, rational, proven science that we can rely on when it's done right. The standard model of particle physics has not a grain of truth in it, although there's a footnote. The Big Bang has been disproved. The Big Bang has been disproved. No less than Sir Roger Penrose states that. He's still alive. He's still saying it. And these presenters listen to him and, and they nod their heads and then they go right back to what Big Brother says. So there is no such thing as the Big Bang. And therefore the cosmological model, which actually predicts the Big Bang, the Big Bang is a derivative of the cosmological model. I don't know if you're aware of that, but it is of some historical interest. So you're not allowed to talk about the universe unless you begin by stating at least three lies in a row. One is the universe came from a Big Bang and went through uh, some kind of expansion. You have to say that space is expanding into non-space, and then you have to say that it's not designed. In other words, there's no designer, that it's just a clock. Well, that, that meets the industrial complex need. It's all you need to know. You'd never talk about anything that could help humans. That's not what science is for. Well, I disagree. I disagree violently, obviously, that science is not to deceive men into making bombs and weapons for the Godfather. That's not what science is meant for. Science is not meant to stop you from understanding you finding out the design blueprint that made you, the universe, and the atoms. There is a design that's been proved. But you see, that always calls forth the God people. And we hate them, don't we? I do. I hate the God people. You know why? They have their own system of deception. Self-deception and mass deception. None of the religions are true. Christianity is a sham that everybody has seen through. The Jews, they gave up on themselves. God gave up on them. The Islam people, there's a lot to be said for the Islam people. They do believe in God and they show it. But unfortunately, even for the Islam people, the Islam nation, may Allah bless them forever, and I already know that he will, but governments are just insanely evil 
And it's not just a national government. It's a government of a culture, a government of a society, a government of a school system, an educational system. This is called the group mind. That's my term because I'm the only man capable of analyzing this who has any exposure at all. I'm putting my neck out on the line by saying any of this because Satan doesn't like it. <laughs> now, I love to say Satan to make your panties crawl up into your crack, make you break down and cry, is make you tear your hair out. You want to kill me? That is your programming talking to you. You need to kill me because Satan is talking to you. <laughs> You don't like that? Go find someone else to listen to because this is what I talk about now because this is the universe we're talking about. So the third model that you need to understand fully is the model of natural selection, biological evolution, Darwinism, which is a racist theory based on no evidence at all. And it completely overshadows the facts that we actually do know about the origins of the human race, completely overlooked, just completely twisted because of the group mind that forces you to see everything in terms of a non-existent transmutational process. That the species got more and more complex by mutations. That is ridiculous. There's never been a single example of that. All you do is point to a diagram that shows the animals arranged by size and, and then on some kind of vertical. This is a diagram that's meant to, sh to point out to you very clearly. So let me state what natural selection says. At the basis, as the foundational premise of natural selection evolution is this. The sun goes around the earth in a chariot that's driven by the mythical gods. And that explains why the sun goes around the earth. It's because it's going so fast that the earth is basically at the center of hell. Now that doesn't sound like natural selection, does it? I hope that you understand the metaphor here. I'm showing you a pattern. So what is the equivalent of the sun drives a chariot across the sky every day and then goes nighty night in an imaginary part of the universe that we'll never see and then magically appears again and goes from east to west again? And if somebody pipes up or some little kid says, I think that the earth is actually spinning on its axis, Access, that kid will not achieve puberty. That kid will be murdered in cold blood by his own people. We're so sorry, Satan. We're so sorry that we had a demon among us. I know all about this. I was excommunicated from the Presbyterian Church, and then I was excommunicated from the Adventist Church. So I am a Christian. Not anymore. Not according to Satan, I'm not... <laughs> Well, that means I'm a real Christian. I saw through the monstrous deception. That's anti-Satanism. So I'll give you the anti-Satanic solution for natural selection. What is the basis of natural selection? Why is this lie still taught? The reason it's still taught, well, there's two reasons. One of them is, is everyone knows that the amoebas started to get more complex and then became fish, then amphibians, then lizards, then birds, then whales, then primates, then man, correct? Obviously! It's so obvious that the sun flies through the sky. It's also so obvious that you're a monkey. And if you deny that, you're unfit to live. You won't fit into society. You're against progress. You're against religion. You don't know anything. You're a renegade. You're a monster. You're a Jesus. You're a prophet. You need to be killed to protect the puppies. 
So it's the same thing with Darwinism. You're not allowed to not know that. You have to say that, or you will be spotted instantly by your peers. It's a group mind. They'll all notice you. It's like in the Matrix. <laughs> okay, we won't go there. So now you know the standard model of particle physics is a satanic plot to get another weapon. That's obvious. The theory of natural selection is to pre prevent you from understanding your origin so you'll never have a conception of your designer. That would be the creator, what's otherwise called God. That's out. So the third thing, the third road that has to be blocked by Satan so that scientists will never find the truth that they can communicate because Satan will block you is the origin of the universe. That's recent. You might say, why would this be important even to the great big brother, Mr. Big Group Mind? Why would that stupid, non-sentient cartel mind even care what anybody thinks about the universe? Because of the plasma mass of, of quantum baryons at the beginning of the universe that supports the particle model. Everything comes back to the particle model because that's what Satan really wants. That's the payoff for Satan. That is the United States government. That is Israel. Whatever is the dominant mind on earth that's seeking world domination, it wants a weapon. It wants power. Well, to get that power, you have to build cyclotrons to crack the protons together because that's where the strong force is. So in order to do that right under the noses of the people who are being raped and robbed blind, the nigger slaves of America and Western Europe, and then the exploited people who are forced to give up their resources, and Iran is about to be forced to give up its petroleum resource because Israel just commanded the United States to get it for Israel, because Israel owns the United States. You're a foreign colony of Israel. So that is the background for this enormously comprehensive plan to dominate the minds of people who seek the truth. You're simply not allowed to get it. And if you do get it, you'll be alone. That's me. That is I. I am getting the truth, and I am alone. Not if you're listening, I'm not alone. I won't be here much longer. But you will be, I hope. So you can steal this. Whatever you hear me say, just pretend that I never existed. Because I don't exist. Not in this world, I don't. I'm a scientist. I'm a rational logician. I know geometry. I know how to get the truth out of facts. I know how to get wisdom out of understanding. I know how to get understanding out of knowledge and I know what to do with wisdom, and that makes me rarer than a dinosaur chicken's teeth. <laughs> I'll work on that, don't worry. So the, the focus of everything, the monkey meat theorem and the Big Bang Soup, is all about the particle physics exploit to get the next weapon. And, you know, the Large Hadron Collider discovered the Higgs boson. That was its only purpose. So that was $100 billion down the drain. Now it's a $1 trillion project, which is due for release by 2028, called the Circular Hadron Collider, which will be orders, well, a multiple bigger. It'll dwarf the Hadron Collider. It's so big that it goes under Lake Lucerne at the south western tip of Switzerland. And it's in the works, and it's an international consortium. This international consortium no longer includes Russia. That should tell you something. But it does include the United States and the most important member, Israel. Israel runs the Hadron Collider system because Israel owns all the resources in North America. The Jews got it. Your President Biden is a puppet. He's a marionette. And you're so stupid that you actually think that maybe your vote or your opinion counts. You don't count. But I do. I do make a difference. This is the only way you can make a difference.
is by getting the truth that the universe says. That is religion. It's when you listen to the universe and understand what the universe says, not the universities, not your teachers, what the universe says. Well, in science, you can save some time by consulting your predecessors, such as Einstein, Planck, Maxwell, Dirac, perhaps, going all the way back to Newton, Boschkevich, Leibniz, Kepler, Galileo, Archimedes, Hipparchus. You, you learn these things, that's going to save you thousands of years. So yes, you want to consult science, the textbooks, the extant body of knowledge. But not in the 20th century you don't, because it was taken over by the group mind and twisted around into anti-science. There is no such thing as the Big Bang. There is no such thing as natural selection. And there is no such thing as a particle system. I have taken that apart, all three systems, put it back together again the way it should be, and what you get instead is there is no Big Bang, although we're not actually sure there's no replacement theory. <laughs> we're not sure where the universe comes from, but I can tell you why we're not sure where the universe comes from. It's possible that it doesn't come from anywhere. Now, I believe that it does, and therefore I am partial to the Big Bang in theory but not the model. The model is incorrect. If there is such a thing as an origin to the universe, which I have to believe that there is, we're nowhere near figuring it out. It'll be hundreds if not thousands of years before we're capable of coming up with a theory of the origin of the universe. Because think of this, why would you even need to know that? Why would you need to know where the universe comes from? The only reason you would need to know that is if it has a relationship with the way things are so that you can understand the way things are better. That's the reason for wanting to know cosmological history. But to get back to the origin, that's beyond reach right now. We don't have enough information. So the Big Bang is ridiculous. It's actually anti-science at its worst, but it actually gets worse than that if you look at it from a higher level as I do. You don't need to know whether the Big Bang is true or not. It's been disproved, so if you want to know if it's true or not, it's not. But why do, they, why do all of these PhDs and very intelligent men convince themselves that it's true? It's to get a job. All of the men who talk about the Big Bang are employed by the industry. And the industry goes right out to people who write books and interpret stuff because human beings, are well, they want the answers. Well, your scientists are supposed to be reliable. I counsel you against that. No, they're not reliable. They're actually anti-reliable. And in fact, you can use that to your advantage in a certain sense if you can see through the system, you can see why, you can see what's being covered up. It's, a, it's funny that even though evil is irrational, it actually has to respond to rationality. And by analyzing the pattern of the enemy, you can, it's called the shopping list, well, exploit. The, the, and to get more information on that, watch a movie based on a book by David Cornwell, uh, better known as John Le Carr, called The Russia House, has Sean Connery and Michelle Pfeiffer. They can't go wrong with that, <laughs> yeah, that combination. Uh, that's about the shopping list exploit, where when you're dealing with your enemy, you want him to start asking you questions because the form of his questions is he's trying to probe you for weaknesses, you'll find out his weaknesses, what he fears most. Well, it's pretty obvious what uh, pseudoscience fears most. It fears the designer. So it's remarkable how close this comes to religion. 
the whole antithesis is between a designer who has a certain blueprint that we can follow and Satan who rules the earth. So it's the everlasting conflict between good and evil on the scientific playing field and if you believe in the Big Bang then you're gone. You lost. If you believe in the monkey meat theorem that humans are descended from the ecology they got you. They turned you. You're a Judas. You're you're going to hell. <laughs> and if you go along with the standard model of particle physics, physics that says that everything is a particle, then you're an anti-scientist. You're against the blueprint. You hate God. You hate your designer. You're a devil and you're going to hell. So there is no standard model of anything. What there is, is a standard anti-model. A standard replacement for the truth. An idol. An idol. An image made in the place of God. In the place of the designer. We don't say God in science. We say designer. Okay? That's 50 minutes. Now, the cosmological model is based on one measurement that is true. It's called the redshift relationship. And I've covered this in several lectures. We're just going to summarize it now because that's how, how science is done. Because the further out a light source is from the Earth, which is considered to be the center of the universe for this system, the Earth is the center of the universe. It, it, we're, we're stuck with that. You may say that. No, oh, no, no, no. Well, you actually have to say that. The Earth is the center of the universe for humans. This is our center. It's not the center. It's a center. And when we look out in all directions, first of all, it's infinite, correct? Nobody knows. You can't answer that question. Infinity doesn't have a definition, but I've defined it. So there is a way through this. But if you try to get the origin of the universe from redshift, that's called the Big Bang model. And that leads to all of the insanity. Dark energy is non-existent. It's not even a real term. Dark matter is um, a bad explanation for some missing mass in a gravitational model. The black hole is completely misunderstood as having a singularity, which is a linear algebra error. And the Big Bang is simply the world's well, not the world's, the universe's biggest black hole is the Big Bang. But that is a misconstruction based on false mathematics. All of these false theories, all of these false models are traceable back to linear algebra because it has a zero as its basis. And I've proved that number does not exist. This is Anna Galactic. We'll be right back with you with some more science. I'm sorry that wasn't much science. That's the bracketing information you need to get the right attitude to what I'm going to tell you next because I have the correct answers. And I'm the only man on earth who does right now. So I'm trying to get this out in some archival form, including upload to YouTube, so that when I die, which will be soon, this information will not be completely lost. Again, I do claim that I've made the greatest discoveries in the history of physics, certainly for the past 120 years. So this is Anna Galactic bringing you the solutions that you need, not just as a scientist, but as a rational man seeking the truth that you're blueprinted to seek. And if you pursue it honestly, use it by the rules, you have to use logic, and you have to stay moral if you're pursuing the way of heaven, as Yeshua taught us all to look up, keep looking up, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, that is called astronomy. We'll be right back. Keep looking up.